One of the questions that I get asked all the time is would I purchase another eco diesel Jeep? I just ordered another Jeep and I ordered it with a Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Casey and well today I want to do a two year review of the eco diesel Jeep Wrangler. I put over 40,000 kilometers on it and we're going to go through things like fuel economy, diesel exhaust fluid usage, problems that I've had along the way because it's spent a little time at the dealer. And then I'll answer that question at the end of the video about would I order another eco diesel. So quick recap, if you're not already aware, we have the three liter turbo eco diesel engine option in our Jeep Wrangler here. So if you haven't seen the eco diesel yet, here it is. And the biggest difference, well, there's two big differences in the engine bay. One, we have our air box, our air intake here is on the driver's side. So if you're looking for snorkels and such, well, that's definitely something you have to consider because there isn't a lot of options available. And we've got our battery towards the rear of the engine bay instead of up here. And uh, our fuse box and all the other bits and pieces are near the front. But let's get into talking about the diesel engine itself. Okay, first question I want to address is the problem with the Eco Diesel's D rating. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the D rating issue, that is something that happens when the engine gets too hot. It basically pulls back fuel and power and it limits it to about 70 kilometers an hour, which I think is probably like, what, 40, 50 miles an hour, something like that. And uh, it's something that's discussed a ton on the Jeep Facebook groups and Jeep forums, but I've only had it happen once. So there's a lot of uh, different factors that can contribute to derating. Now I had it happen. This was one of the hottest days that I've ever had my Jeep out. I think it was somewhere in the low forties, that's Celsius. And we were east in British Columbia, climbing high mountain passes. And it wasn't just my Jeep. I also had Paul from Epic Adventure Outfitters with me who had his blue Eco Diesel Gladiator. And we had both of our Jeeps derate and limit their speeds going uphill at the exact same time. And so we were left doing about 70 kilometers an hour on a 90 or 100 kilometer an hour section of highway and just crawling up Jeeps with us that had the gas 3.6 liter with us. And well, they were flying up the hill, no problem. One of the common questions that comes up is, well, what if I re-geared? Well, Paul's Jeep, his Eco Diesel Gladiator is re-geared and he still had the same issue. So I don't think re-gearing is gonna solve the problem. From what I can tell researching on uh, Facebook groups and forums is we need to get more heat out of the engine. So there have been some people playing with different oil cooler setups, removing the vents in the top of the hood or removing your fender liners. So I haven't seen any conclusive ways to eliminate derating. So it mostly happens when it's hotter out and when you have more load on the vehicle. Now, obviously larger, heavier tires is gonna add more load, putting a ton of gear on it. We've got a rack and a rooftop tent and I usually have a ton of stuff in the Jeep that contributes to it. Um, towing can be very problematic. Now I haven't had a lot of experience towing, but I'm gonna be taking the Jeep out with a smaller trailer. Actually, you can see it up there hiding behind me. Um, but that trailer only weighs about 2000 pounds. So I'm hoping it's not gonna cause me any problems. I know Brad from Cherry Recon, he got rid of his diesel gladiator and a lot of it was due to the towing issues that he was having with it derating. So if you're towing, and especially if you've got a Gladiator, which has a higher towing capacity than the Wrangler, the Wrangler having 3,500 pounds and the Gladiator, I believe is 6,000 or 6,500 pounds, you're probably gonna run into the derating experience more often, especially if you live somewhere warmer, uh, some of the Southern states, or if it's in the middle of the summer up here in uh, British Columbia, it can get quite warm as well. But for almost every trip that I've been on, with the exception of that one, in the peak of the summer in August here in BC, I have not experienced derating at all and neither has Paul over at Epic Adventure Outfitters. It was just that one time, it was super hot, like 40, 42 degrees out and we were going up some serious grades. Uh, so to me, it hasn't caused me much grief, but I can definitely see how it would be a problem if you're looking to get one of these for towing or you live somewhere really hot. Let's talk about some of the problems that I've had. So I've had my Jeep into the dealer a couple times to have some things fixed. Uh, one of them has nothing to do with the engine. Actually, I had a problem with my door handle and they had to fix it. Um, but the big issue, and this was one that took the dealer 
about six months to get the parts for. And my Jeep wasn't down while this was happening, fortunately, but it wasn't running uh, optimally. It was having some other weird issues with the uh, throttle basically cutting out sometimes. And it was burning through diesel exhaust fluid like crazy. And what it ended up being was, well, there was a problem with the emission system. So the diesel engines and pretty much any new diesel vehicle has a very complex emission system with exhaust gas recirculation and as well spraying diesel exhaust fluid into the uh, emissions to reduce particulates that are coming out and burn some of that stuff off. I'm not gonna get into a deep dive into the diesel exhaust components, um, but you should know there is a bunch of expensive, complex and easy to damage emissions components on these diesel engines and pretty much any new diesel engine that's coming out. So here, let me show you what I'm talking about under the Jeep. So hiding underneath my metal cloak skid plate system, you can see a bit of the exhaust system, which is right here and right there. And the emission system follows along here. Now I have it all protected with the skid plate, but it goes all the way under there. And essentially this entire skid plate is covering sensitive parts. So I put the skid plate system on to try to prevent any damage from off-roading because there's wires and sensors sticking out of there. The system, you know, is exposed like any exhaust system, but all of those components are way more expensive than an exhaust. So what happened with mine is one of the valves, I think in the EGR system failed and it was sticking open. And so it was causing my Jeep to run improperly, run less fuel efficient and dump a pile of particulates into the exhaust and required the system to just spray a ton of diesel exhaust fluid in there. When I took it in for warranty work, they didn't just replace or they couldn't just replace the single component that failed. They said, no, we don't weld that stuff in. We get the entire piece, the entire setup for this. So basically from where it comes down off the engine all the way to where the uh, resonator is at the back. So the entire section that's under the skid plate had to come out. And that repair would have cost about $5,000 to replace that. That's in Canadian. If this was outside of warranty and that happened, that is a really, really expensive repair. That's nearly 10% of the cost of the vehicle um, to replace that emission system. You know, and on top of that, it took a really long time to get that. Um, so if that would have caused my vehicle to not run, I probably wouldn't have been able to drive this for several months while we waited for that, which is a huge issue. Now it's all under warranty. So it was all covered. That was fine. But if you're buying one of these used, that's four or five years old, you know, that's something to consider. Now I know a lot of you guys are going to say, well, just delete it, delete the emission system. That's fine. That's definitely an option. You can delete all of that. There are kits out there that are available. I will leave that with you guys to discover and explore because that can uh, get you in a little bit of trouble with uh, like the EPA or the local law enforcement. That varies tons depending on which state or province or country you live in. So I'm not gonna suggest that as a good workaround because honestly, you shouldn't have to do that. But that's the world we live in with diesel engines. So keep that in mind, the exhaust and emission system on this can fail and it's very, very expensive to replace if it's outside of warranty. So we just talked a little bit about diesel exhaust fluid and how much I was using when I had the issues. Now, if you're unfamiliar with diesel exhaust fluid, it's basically urea and you put it in this blue spot next to your fuel filler. And what the Jeep does is it sprays it into the exhaust to try to reduce the particulates that are coming out the tailpipe. It's pretty much in every diesel motor, whether it's a vehicle or a truck or a farm equipment, it's just, it's just what it, how it is now. And a lot of, it's very controversial. A lot of people don't like it. Regardless, let me talk about my experience with diesel exhaust fluid. So as of right now, there's a technical bulletin out to get the computer updated at the dealer to fix some of the diesel exhaust fluid consumption, which I haven't had done yet, um, just because it's a huge pain for me to get the Jeep into the dealer. Up until now, I can give you some of my experience with diesel exhaust fluid. So I've been averaging on highway trips about 5,000 kilometers per tank. Now a tank is two of those big boxes that you would buy in the store. And they're about 30 bucks Canadian per jug. So if you figure, well, every 5,000 kilometers, I'm spending about another $60 in diesel exhaust fluid. You know, that, that adds up, right? Because I'm getting about 
500 kilometers per tank. Now I'll talk about fuel economy in a second, but I'm getting around, you know, four to 600 kilometers per tank. So every 10 tanks or so, I'm having to put $60 worth of diesel exhaust fluid in the Jeep. That does impact your uh, dollars per kilometer, dollars per mile, uh, with regards to how much it costs to operate the Jeep and drive it. Now, from what I've read and kind of researched online, that update to the computer to reduce the diesel exhaust fluid consumption does make quite a difference. People are seeing nearly 10,000 miles, which I think is about 15,000 kilometers or so, but I haven't confirmed any of that, and so I can't speak to that firsthand. All I know is without the update, it is going through diesel exhaust fluid like crazy. Now, when I had the problem with the emission system, I was going through a jug of diesel exhaust fluid almost every tank of fuel. It was crazy. So I was spending another 30 bucks and on top of the 80 or 90 bucks, it's cost me to fill this up. And so let's talk a little bit about fuel economy. Generally when the Jeep is running, right? I didn't have any problems. On the highway, I can see north of 500 kilometers per tank. So I'll get somewhere between five to 600 kilometers. It really just depends on how fast I'm driving. The optimal speed that I've found driving this is about 60 miles an hour or about 100 kilometers an hour as far as fuel economy goes. But let me tell you, the diesel has no problem cruising at 130 or 140, which is you know around 70, 80 miles an hour. And when I'm down in the United States on the freeways, we are definitely have no issue cruising on the highway, keeping up with traffic, tra traffic, keeping up with traffic. And if I need to pass someone, the diesel has tons of torque to get up and go and accelerate. And uh, I've probably had this about 90 miles an hour is about as fast as I've driven it. And that's when it starts to taper off as far as power goes. Um, but as far as fuel economy goes, cruising at 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour seems to get me the best fuel economy. Now, how good is my fuel economy? Well, with 37 inch tires and all of my gear and the roof rack and the rooftop tent, I'm averaging about 11 to 11 and a half liters per kilometer, which I think converts to somewhere around 19 miles per gallon. Uh, I'll put the exact conversion right here below us because uh, I don't monitor my fuel economy in miles per gallon, but I'm averaging around 11 or so liters per 100K. Uh, without the rooftop tent and without the rack, I actually can get that down to around 10 and a half liters per 100 kilometers. And so it gets pretty good. And if we're cruising at 90 kilometers an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, you know, I've seen as low as 10 flat, 9.8, somewhere in there, which on 37 inch tires and all my gear in there, I think that's pretty good, honestly, for a Jeep Wrangler. Um, around town, if I end up doing a lot of driving in the city, which I generally don't do because this is pretty much for making YouTube videos, um, I'll see somewhere around 13, maybe 14 liters per 100 kilometers. But honestly, I don't spend a lot of time driving in the city. And a lot of people ask me, would you, should I buy the diesel or the 4xe? Well, my feedback continuously is, if you do a lot of highway driving, the diesel I think is the best and most fuel economic Jeep Wrangler or Gladiator that you can get. And if you do a lot of city driving, you can plug in every night and you can charge up your, your vehicle and you want a Wrangler because the 4xe isn't available in the Gladiator yet. The 4xe is a really good option, but it really loses out on range and as far as highway fuel economy goes, because as soon as you burn through the batteries, you're running on a two liter motor and it has a smaller fuel tank in there because it has to accommodate all of the batteries. So that's my opinion. Um, highway, this is definitely the most fuel economy, fuel economic Jeep. And especially if you're gonna put some big mods on here, like big tires, roof rack, rooftop tent, all that kind of stuff. Now, there are a couple little things that I don't like about the Eco Diesel as far as driving it goes. I mean, on the highway, it cruises really nice. The diesel motor is quiet. You don't really hear it. Um, when I'm off-roading and you're in four low and you're getting a little bit more RPMs in the motor, you definitely notice it, um, but it's not anything obnoxious and definitely on my long drives and I've put in some huge drives, you know, drives where we've driven for 12 to 14 hours a day for multiple days to get places like Moab and Southern California. And, you know, the diesel motor is not anything that I've considered as far as annoying loud noise coming from it. It's mostly just wind noise because well, we're driving a Jeep. A couple things that I don't like about it. Turbo is a little bit slow and unresponsive and so is the transmission. And so off the line, when you uh, go from a green light, it is laggy. It uh, takes a little bit of time to spool up the turbo 
and get some of that power into the engine. But I also find the transmission is a little bit laggy and clunky as well. I don't find that it gets right into gear initially very well. It kind of stutters a little bit. And I think the tunes on the 3.6 liters are much more responsive. And I know that the aftermarket tunes on these transmissions make a huge difference to the transmission performance. So it's not anything to do with the hardware or the, uh, you know, the transmission itself, but it's more about the tune that's on these. And so maybe the newer models are coming with an updated tune. Maybe this is a 2020 and this was the first EcoDiesel in Canada and one of the first ones available for purchase. There's probably little things that they've updated over time, um, but I do find the transmission a little bit clunky and it's a little bit slow to respond to, uh, you know, pushing down the throttle on the highway and then it needs to gear down. Uh, it's a little bit slow to respond to that. And so it'd be nice to see if there's some updated tunes. I know the aftermarket tunes really clean a lot of that up. Really, that's probably the only thing that I have to complain about other than stuff that I already knew about with having to put diesel exhaust fluid in there. And honestly, diesel exhaust fluid is, you know, you're, you, you know you're what you're getting into when you buy the Jeep. And so you know you're gonna be having to fill that up. But with the high consumption that it has right now, on some of these road trips, it's kind of annoying that I have to stop and get diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, I can't go on a trip to California and back without having to stop and buy some and put it in. So, okay, let's get to the question that you guys continually ask me in the comments, and that is, would I buy another Eco Diesel Jeep? Well, I just ordered another Jeep, and I'll tell you guys here, it doesn't have the Eco Diesel motor in it. So if you wanna know more about what I ordered before I start making videos here on the channel, go check out my Patreon. I'll put a link down in the description below. I'm gonna be talking about the new Jeep a little bit on Patreon ahead of the videos here on the channel and talking about exactly what engine we're going with and why. If you like this video, guys, leave a like, leave me some questions, and I do upload every week, so hit that subscribe button.